right, so we're working on this old fork truck. We got a swing and deal on it, and it should work good for pulling the trees out at the tree farm with, uh, you know, modifying some stuff for our attachment over there. But um, anyway, you know, it kind of seemed like it had a little bit, it just seemed like it ran rich. Some gas was kind of coming out of the exhaust, and it just seems underpowered. So um, we're working through the thing. We're just going to verify some of our engine internals, and the first thing we're going to do on this diesel engine here is a compression test. Now, if you know, we mostly work with gasoline engines. If we would have been thinking, we would have left all our injectors in and then closed off our fuel petcock to our tank and ran that all out, but we didn't, so our filters are probably full of gas and our injection pump. So <laughs> it should be interesting to see what happens, to say the least, but we gotta turn that over and get that all out, and we're gonna try and get a compression test at the same time. So some of you are probably laughing right now as you know what's gonna happen, but it's all kind of new to me. So hopefully that doesn't go sky high and hit the roof of the place, but we'll see. But anyway, we're going to run the compression test here, and then after we run it, we'll record our, our, um, our values there, and then we'll squirt a little bit of oil in and see if our values change. So um, I think this is just a first good step in verifying our engine health. What year is this, an 80? Probably a 79. A seven, yeah, a 79, so it's probably got a lot of run time. So it wouldn't hurt to just get an idea of our overall engine health here. And hopefully um, what I see is all the uh, chambers are all at the same pressure, I guess. Um, if one's lower, obviously we have an issue. The first place I'm going to look is the valve train. But if they're all the same, you know, then I'm, I'm confident that, you know, we might have a chance of saving the engine. So I guess let's, let's find out. Didn't get any higher. Ooh, that's pretty low. That's 200 on that one. So we shouldn't have to open up any throttle. A diesel has wide open throttle all the time. So let's write that down. Might be rings. We might have to put a put some cylinders in it. So now we're just going to continue to move through the engine like this and see if we get the same measurement on um, each of these guys. So kind of the guy who we bought it from, he was sitting out in a field for a while and um, his explanation is that over time it just seemed to lose power um, continually. So, um, you know, it kind of fits with engine wear, but maybe valve train has come out of adjustment. So again, we're just working through and seeing if we get the same measurements um, throughout each of the four cylinders. So anyway, Dad poured a little bit of oil there down the cylinder. Um, quite a bit. It'd be interesting to see. I don't, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about diesels, so hopefully it doesn't find a way to um, run on that oil. I know when turbo seals go out, you can have runaway engine situations. So it should be interesting to see. Um, if nothing else, you know, um, we see our compression numbers change. We'll know that uh, that probably means we have bad rings, I'd assume, at this point. But again, we're going to work through every cylinder before we make a determination. Here we go with the oil in it. All right. About all the more we got out of it, really, that's not that big of a change. I'd kind of expect that even normally on uh, cold rings. So what'd that go up to? Like just under 250? 230. I guess so. Yeah, it's like 230, 240, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh oh. Now we're starting to see some differentiation. Cylinder two went to 300 there without oil in it. So, yeah, that's enough differentiation to cause it to run kind of off. So anyway, we're going to cook through these, and then we'll check back when we're done and look at all our measurements here with oil and without oil. But um, obviously now we see some differentiation. When we're done with this, the next place I'm going to go ahead and look is at the valve train. So I believe these are all solid lifters, so they have a lash adjustment. And if they're out of adjustment, obviously if you're not opening that intake valve um, all the way, you're not getting as much of an intake charge and then your compression numbers will be less because obviously you're compression, compressing less volume. So um, anyway, moving on. All right, so 
even though we had some uh, distribution on our pressures there across the other cylinders, cylinder four is not getting any pressure at all. Let me purge this really quick. Now, if you want to try and turn this over again, just to show. Yep. We're not getting a dang thing there. So I'm sure that that's kind of what was contributing to all our diesel going through our exhaust. And as you can see how everything's wet, um, it wasn't getting burned at all. So definitely gonna have to jump in there. That's, that's something more than cylinder rings for sure. Oh boy, so it, at this point here, we're gonna get this all taken, uh, taken off. We're gonna pull our valve cover off and I guess turn the engine over and get a good look at all of our valve train and uh, make sure everything's at least opening. And um, you know, then we move on from there. But I'm assuming that our valve train will be okay and we'll be pulling the head off. Um, you know, either we got a burnt valve or something, but seeing zero on the, uh, the compression test is pretty darn significant. I've only seen that one other time. All right, so we pulled the valve cover and these are solid lifters and they have a lash adjustment as per the manual. Now this is actually the only rocker I can get any, um, you know, play in, which what you're hearing is the lash. And all these other ones here are tight and this engine is dead cold. So even if these were to close right now, as this engine warms up, a lot of these valves would be running open. And um, the one that definitely looks the tightest where the springs are actually, uh, the valve springs are compressed, looks like our cylinder four, which is the one that was returning um, no compression whatsoever. So um, the only thing I can get anything out of is our two cylinders that came out the best. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, I kind of wondered how this could happen, but if you look really close, someone's been in here and they've boiled this head. It's no longer painted, you know, it was, boiled off a number of years ago and then it just has surface rust around it but someone's fooled uh, with with the head gasket or something i'm assuming then they went ahead and reset the um all the valve train equipment here and they must not have necessarily known what they were doing it might have been the the guy we actually bought it from you know he just was he just really didn't tell us he just didn't really want to tell us a whole lot about it you know i figured he was withholding something so um, at this point, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to just loosen up four a little bit, you know, not necessarily at the right setting, um, but just to verify what's going on. And then that will, um, if we can get some compression out of that, it'll definitely lead me to believe that we have, we're onto something here with our valve train. All right, so without getting too crazy here, we just rolled the engine over until um, one of our uh, valve springs on whatever cylinder we're working on here is at max lift or close to it because at that time our um, opposing valve on that cylinder will be on um, the base circle of the cam lobe and then we can go ahead and adjust our um, our lash so these are kind of weird it looked like it was a half inch bolt if you look here it's really just something that's threaded in there that moves around and there's really no way to lock it in so we're gonna have to go and look at the tech manual there and kind of figure out what's going on exactly but you know it might be missing something from when this um, this individual did the head work um, he might have lost a set screw that's supposed to go in there I'm just really not sure but that's uh, once I broke it loose um, it's just super loose and it would make it hard to maintain any sort of a valve lash even if I did go ahead and set it which we will do in a second, but um, let's take a look at the tech manual and see how these were set up. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and loosened this up. Um, I think they were running open. And so now with both these loosened, this intake valve is starting to open. So it looks tight, but um, they have enough lash where at least uh, the valves aren't gonna run open. We'll, we'll do a compression test here. But one thing I'm noticing um, is that this uh, adjustment screw is way down and it looks like uh, this exhaust valve doesn't have near the lift the other um, valves do in the system so i imagine that's why someone kind of messed with this and tried to adjust it out but we're probably missing um, cam lobe is what our issue is here so uh, moving forward i guess we'll just verify our compression test but that's kind of why this guy looks like it's loose now these other ones are all kind of a resistive uh, fitment here so um, they kind of hold their adjustment but this one kind of 
moves around and stuff. So I think we, we found our problem. All right, here we go. Yep. We're good. And just like that, we saw some pretty good cylinder pressure. So I'm assuming the bottom end of this engine is entirely fine. A lot of these are adjusted so they have no lash. So I'm sure our variation in our compression readings is just because those valves are barely seating. All right, so I'm gonna have dad roll the engine over here quick. But, but watch all of the valve train here. See the amount of lift and then watch this valve here. So here we go. But as you see this, this is the, the same valve on an opposite cylinder. If you wanna bump it over, see how much lift that one gets. So that one's got pretty good lift. Now if we come over here, it hardly, hardly opens at all. So um, we're missing some material on the cam lobe there. So at this point, I think we've kind of figured out what we need to do next. Um, you know, potentially the bottom end of our engine might be all right, but we definitely need to pull the cylinder head and, um, you know, get into the camshaft and all that. So should be interesting moving forward. So if you have any questions, comments, you know something I don't hear that could help us out, you know, I guess um, drop a comment below and let me know. And um, we'll be moving forward on this in the future.